Hey guys, it's Jake here with Eat Trailer. Today we have a 2022 Ford F-350 and we're gonna be taking a look at it and I'm gonna show you how to install the Torque Lift Super Hitch Magnum. The biggest difference right off the bat that you're gonna notice between this hitch and the hitch that came on this truck um, is that it's gonna have two hitch receivers. The hitch that came on this truck had a three inch hitch receiver but the owner of this vehicle has an in-bed camper. So the camper sticks out to here so there's no room to even use the hitch anymore. And what he wants to do is he wants to take a boat with him when he goes on his camping trips. So what you'll do with this is you can pick up a super truss, which is a, a very long version of a hitch extender. You slide it in here and there's a pipe on the bottom, which is essentially the support pipe. And then the hitch on the top will go in the top portion here and extend out however far he's gonna need to um, to extend past his camper. So wherever his first step is for his in-bag camper, that's where his new hitch receiver is gonna start so he can tow that boat. This hitch is gonna come with two different size hitch receivers, a two inch in the bottom and a two and a half inch in the top. Um, it will also come included with a sleeve adapter to take it down to two inches if you have, um, if you already have a super truss that has two two inch inlets um, the one that I would recommend for this one would be a two and a half for the top and a two inch for the bottom. This also is going to allow you to use different accessories. So if you already have some two inch hitch accessories, you can use it in the bottom. If you already have some two and a half inch accessories, you can use them in the top. Uh, this hitch is also going to come included with your pin and clips to be able to use them. They'll work, you know, top and bottom. They're interchangeable. It doesn't matter. Um, one of the things I like the most about this torque lift hitch is that the paint job is very, very rugged. Um, it's going to be hard to scratch or chip this paint. Um, it looks really good on the back of this F-350. It's The truck itself is a big, robust truck, and this hitch just complements it really well. Uh, another thing we like to point out is that you're going to have these extra loops here for when you're using it with the super truss, you'll have some... Um, tie down chains that help to stabilize the truss. Those will connect into here and on the other side. The safety chain loops are going to be much easier to connect to than the factory Ford ones. Uh, a lot of the factory Ford ones, um, in fact the one that we took off of this, had the shackles that are mounted permanently in the um, trailer hitch itself because this, the safety chain loops are really hard to get any type of hook in. Uh, these you're not going to have that problem. For example, here's your um, standard chain that most people will have on their trailers. The S-hook that we have on here is kind of small um, for a trailer that you would be typically towing with this truck. You can see it doesn't fit great on there, but again, if you had your, your shackles on your old hitch, you can just transfer them over to this. Now a couple of measurements so you guys know what you're getting. From the center of the hitch pin to the outermost part of the bumper, it's going to be about an inch and a half. Um, this is this is going to sit about where your factory hitch is, maybe a little bit further out, um, but it's going to be pretty close. From the ground to the top inside of our bottom hitch receiver, it's going to be about 17 inches. And to the top one, it's going to be about 21 inches. So more than tall enough if you want to use any accessories in here like a bike rack, cargo carrier, anything like that. It's going to be more than high enough off the ground. You don't have to worry about any ground clearance. Now, as far as the construction goes, this hitch is built extremely heavy duty. Um, and with that, it's, it has to be built heavy for the weight capacities that it can handle. The gross towing weight capacity for this hitch is going to be 20,000 pounds. The gross tongue weight capacity will be 2,500 pounds. And if you're using this with weight distribution, which a lot of people do, it's going to be rated for 30,000 pounds gross trailer weight and 3,000 pounds gross tongue weight. Speaking of the construction of it, this hitch is built very, very heavy. Um, and with that, it's gonna be heavy to lift. So Torque Lift makes it in three pieces. You'll have the two side brackets and the center piece. It took us three people to make it a lot easier to get it installed. You could probably do it with two. It will be very difficult to do by yourself. So um, I definitely recommend having a couple friends come over on a Saturday and help you get it installed. It shouldn't take you but maybe three or four hours to get it installed. Um, but the hitch comes in at about 185 pounds in shipping weight from us. So 
Um, again, if you split that up evenly, the center piece is gonna be your heaviest, and that's what, definitely when you're gonna need some help. With that being said, let's go ahead and take it inside and show you how we got it in place. To begin our installation, we need to start by removing these two bolts that are attaching our bumper to our hitch. We'll be using a 13 millimeter socket in order to do this. And we'll take a 22 millimeter socket and remove these two nuts off of uh, the back of our bumper. We'll have two on each side. We're going to thread one loosely back on just so that our bumper doesn't fall out of place. Then we'll need to disconnect our seven pole wiring. And a sensor wire. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll get a hold of our bumper and then thread off the last nut that we have in place. And we can set our bumper to the side. To remove our factory hitch, we're going to have to take out six bolts from each side of our hitch. The bolts here on the end that you can see are going to be removed from the top and the other four remaining behind it are going to be removed from the bottom. Uh, but because we're removing this, we have to detach any wiring that is connected to it. We'll take a trim panel tool and pop these out. We'll take a 15 16 socket to get these bolts removed. One thing that'll help to break them loose is to use a breaker bar. Uh, we usually use a pipe on top of a regular socket in order to loosen them up. We ended up just sliding this bolt back in just to help hold this lower bracket. Using that same 15, 16 socket, uh, we did the same thing that we did for the top and used a breaker bar in order to break them loose. Because um, these are really tight, they do have blue Loctite on them. We broke all eight of them loose on the bottom and then we're coming back with an impact to remove them all the way. We are going to wait to remove the two most rearward ones, one on each side, until we have an extra set of hands to hold this hitch. Now with an extra set of hands, you will want two additional people to lift this. If you're doing this from the ground, you could probably use a floor jack to help you to support it, uh, but we're gonna take those last two bolts out. We'll set it aside. We're gonna put up our side brackets first and then we can attach the cross beam. These brackets that were in your hitch or inside your frame rail are gonna still need to be there, uh, but they move around so you wanna make sure you line them up. The forwardmost ones um, can kinda be finicky, but we'll do those next. We just wanna get, uh, we're gonna have somebody lift this up for us and then we'll get one bolt started in that nut plate and that'll hold it up so we can get the remaining five bolts in. And we're just gonna go along replacing these bolts. We're just gonna do it hand tight until we get the uh, rear of our receiver mounted up. You'll take a flat washer and uh, that's what we're gonna use on these bolts. The, the flange head on these are, they're big enough but this is going to give us a little bit better base because of the holes in our hitch are bigger than what we're in our factory hitch. Now with an extra set of hands, we can take our cross tube and we're going to slide it inside each 
of these brackets. That's why we wanted to leave it loose. Spare tire looks like it's giving us a little bit of trouble. So we may have to loosen the spare tire up, push it forward a little bit so we can get our bracket to line up. Get Aiden's side in first. Make sure the wires are out of the way of our bracket. Push until it fills in both sides. Make sure it's in, then take our bolts, put the smaller washers on there, slide it from the inside out, and then we'll get a lock washer and a nut started on the side. We're gonna do that same thing for the remaining three holes on each side of our hitch. You'll wanna to torque these eight bolts to the specifications in your instructions. After we get those eight torqued down, we can come back with our 15, 16 socket and tighten and torque all of the rest of the bolts that are holding the hitch onto our frame. We're gonna remove these two nuts from both sides of the hitch, and then we're gonna be installing a bracket in this hole and up to these two. I will take a small mallet and beat these brackets out. Take these out because we will not be reusing them. Now we can take a few more of our bolts with flat washers. Slide them through these holes where we just removed the bolts from. And we'll slide them through the top hole too. There we go. And then we'll take our last bolt and our bracket. Slide our bolt through, put our spacer block on, take two more washers, these are going to be spacers, and then take our plate and slide it on. And we'll need to take three more flat washers, slide those over. Three lock washers. And top each one off with a nut. Then we'll need to tighten and torque these to the specifications in our instructions. Now to get your wiring re-secured, we went ahead and reconnected the wires that we, if we had to disconnect any to get the hitch out. They do give you some holes here in the side of the hitch. Um, we just found that it's not quite long enough to be able to reach um, to use our factory pushpin fasteners. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna make sure we have enough room to reconnect our bumper here and our seven pole but otherwise, we're going to take the rest of these wires and zip tie them up to this factory wiring to get them up out of the way. Now we can replace our bumper the way that we took it off. Before tightening down our bumper, we're going to need to put our bolts in here for our uh, bumper stiffener. What we did was, you may have a hard time lining it up side to side. Um, but you will want to get your bumper re-squared up uh, once we get these in place. But we put one over here to be sure that we can get both in place. We'll put a flat washer, slide it through, then another flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. And now we can get our bumper centered up to the back of our truck and then tighten these two down and put on the remaining 
nuts on the back side of our bumper and tighten and torque those down. Now with everything torqued down to the specifications, that's going to do it for our installation. You're ready to start using your new super hitch.